What's up? You ready for some more books? I've got two books. And a mindfulness activity to finish with because I'm obsessed with these. Two books. One is called We're Making Breakfast for Mother by Shirley Netzel. And the other one is called The Enormous Potato. You know this is going to be a big potato. And it is retold by Aubrey Davis. So it must not be her story, but she rewrote it. So there is something similar about these two books, and I'm going to see if you can figure it out, okay? All right, so we're making breakfast for mother. Here we go. You might be able to help me out. Okay. We're making breakfast for mother. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. We're fixing up this shiny tray. She'll know we're having a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here are some flowers. We picked her a bunch to decorate this shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here is the cereal, the kind that goes crunch, that's next to the flowers. We picked her a bunch that decorate this shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here is the sugar, lumpy and sweet. That's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch, that's next to the flowers, we picked her a bunch that decorate this shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here is the toast we made whole wheat. It's beside the sugar, lumpy and sweet. That's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch, that's next to the flowers. We've picked her a bunch that decorate the shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Do you see what's happening here? Here is the tea. We brewed her a pot. For dunking the toast, we made whole wheat. It's beside the sugar, lumpy and sweet. That's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch. That's next to the flowers, we picked her a bunch that decorate this shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here's a banana with only one spot. We put by the tea, we brewed her a pot. For dunking the toast, we made whole wheat. It's beside the sugar, lumpy and sweet. That's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch. That's next to the flowers, we picked her a bunch that decorate this shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. Here is the jelly, sticky and bright, that's near the banana with only one spot. We put by the pot, nope, the tea that we brewed her a pot. For dunking the toast, we made whole wheat. It's beside the sugar, lumpy and sweet. That's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch. That's next to the flowers, we picked her a bunch. That decorate the shiny tray. We know she'll have a super day. Since we're making breakfast for mother. Oh, I'm gonna need your help, this is getting hard. Oh, this is a, look at that, silly. That is a milk, like a little milk container. They put the milk in that little cow. Here is some milk, frosty and white to stand by the jelly, sticky and bright, that's near the banana with only one spot, we put by the tea, we brewed her a pot. For dunking the toast, we made the whole wheat. It's beside the sugar, lumpy and sweet, that's for the cereal, the kind that goes crunch, that's next to the flowers, we picked her a bunch that decorate the shiny tray. We know that she'll have a super day since we're making breakfast for mother. 
Good morning, Mother. Happy day. Look at the flowers we picked for your tray. Here's some milk. It was hard to pour. We brought you cereal. Ooh, some spilled on the floor. Yikes, you guys. Here's the sugar and tea. It's not very hot and a banana with only one spot. And here's the whole wheat toast. It's a little too brown with raspberry jelly and oops, oh, jelly side down. Oh no, you guys, it's kind of falling apart. You made me breakfast? I'm impressed. Oh no, the cat's eating her cereal and the dog is eating her toast. Oh no, looks like that cat's trying to get the banana. Oh brother. Let's share this feast and then get dressed. <laughs> we'll put on our jackets and we'll go for a hike since I don't want to see what the kitchen looks like. Cause she knows that kitchen's a mess. It's fun making breakfast for mother. <laughs> Looks like they ended up going out for pancakes. That was nice that they tried to make breakfast for mom though, huh? Too funny. Okay, now for the next book. And I want you to see if you see any similarities, okay? Ooh, before we move on, let's talk about the characters in this book. Who are the characters in this book? Obviously the mother, right? Then we had the kiddos, right? And dad, and the dog and the cat. And where did this take place? What was the setting? Do you remember where it was? Where was this happening at? At their house, yep. And there ended up being a little bit of a problem at the end when they were trying to deliver the food, huh? Remember? Stuff so started dropping and flopping, and then the animals were starting to eat the food. That was a little bit of a problem. And then they solved the problem by doing what? They got dressed and went out together and got some more breakfast, didn't they? Okay, the enormous potato. Do you know what the word enormous means? Like, so big. Like bigger than big, like bigger than huge, enormous. Okay, I don't, I mean this potato sounds nuts. All right, here we go. There once was a farmer who had an eye. It wasn't like an eye, your eye or my eye. It was a potato eye and the farmer planted it and it grew into a potato. Potato grew bigger and bigger. It grew fat. It grew enormous. It looks like it's taller than the farmer now. Look at what that farmer's wearing. Oh, he's wearing rain boots and a rain hat. It's been interesting thing to wear as a farmer. It was the biggest potato in the world. Dun, dun, dun. It's time to pull it out, said the farmer. So he grabbed the potato and he pulled and he pulled again, but the potato wouldn't come out of the ground. So he called his wife. Wife, woohoo, wife. Well, the wife grabbed the farmer and the farmer grabbed the potato and they pulled and they pulled again, but the potato wouldn't come out of the ground. So the wife called for their daughter. Daughter, oh daughter. The daughter grabbed the wife and the wife grabbed the farmer and the farmer grabbed the potato and they pulled and they pulled again, but the potato wouldn't come out of the ground. So the daughter called the dog. 
Uh, here, dog. Come here, dog. Riff, riff, riff. The dog grabbed the daughter. The daughter grabbed the wife. The wife grabbed the farmer, the farmer grabbed the potato, and they pulled and they pulled again, but the potato would not come out of the ground. So the dog called the cat. Come on, cat, come. I don't know what the dog sounded like. That dog looks like a rabbit. The dog looks like a rabbit. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> the cat grabbed the dog, the dog grabbed the daughter, the daughter grabbed the wife, the wife grabbed the farmer, the farmer grabbed the potato, and they pulled, and they pulled again, but the potato wouldn't come out of the ground. So the cat called the mouse. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. Do you think the mouse is gonna do it? Like they're like, whew, good thing the mouse was here. The mouse grabbed the cat. The cat grabbed the dog. The dog grabbed the daughter. The daughter grabbed the wife. The wife grabbed the farmer. And the farmer grabbed the potato. And they pulled. And they pulled again. <gasps> Rip! Out came the potato. That's a big potato, said the farmer. That's a big potato, said the wife. Uh, that's a dirty potato, said the daughter. So they washed it, and they chopped it, and they cooked it, too. Do you like my people voices? <laughs> the smell of the potato brought all the people from town. They brought forks, they brought bowls, they brought butter and salt, and soon everyone was eating potato. My, it was good. Eating for all those people. Eating the potato. So much potato. Well, they ate and they ate. It's the townspeople. They ate and they ate until the potato was gone. And now the story is gone too. The end. <laughs> that was an enormous potato. I've never seen a potato quite so big. Did you notice anything that was similar between the enormous potato and we're making breakfast for mother? Think about it. It had the same style of writing. So two totally different stories. This was like a family and they were making breakfast for mom in the house. This, the setting was out um, on a farm, right? Like out in a big garden. And the characters were the farmer, the wife, the daughter, the dog, the cat, and the mouse, and all the townspeople, right? And there was a problem. It was so big, the farmer could not pull it out of the ground. Like, could not. So we had to keep asking for help, right? And then they finally got it out, and they were able to cook it, and they fed the whole town, and it was fabulous, right? So wondering if you can figure out what the similarity is between these two books in the style of writing. Think about it. I think you're right. I'm going to I'm going to say you guessed it right. It repeat it was like a repeat kind of story where one thing would add on and then you repeat all of the stuff that we said before, right? So with this one, we kept adding things and then we'd go through the whole list. And then we'd add one more thing and we'd go through the whole list, right? Like, here's the tea that we brewed or a pot. We're dunking the toast beside the sugar. And we kept going through and it kept adding and building on, right? Same thing with this. 
when it would say that the wife came and helped the farmer and then the daughter pulled the wife and then the wife pulled the farmer and then the dog pulled the daughter and then the daughter pulled the wife and then, so it was repeating, right? So they'd add something and then repeat and go through the whole little scenario. I like books like that, I think they're funny. So I hope you enjoy those two books in our little food unit. And I'd like to end with another mindfulness card. You know I love these. This is called Heart Garden. So you know it's going to be beautiful and you know I'm going to love it. Okay, are you ready? All right, you know how we have to sit mindfully. Can we talk about my, can we talk about, what? I don't, you know what, we're just, we're going to pull it down. We're going to pull it down and it is what it is. It's still kind of wet. You know how I like my wet hair. Okay, you ready? Sit mindfully, crisscross applesauce, spine straight, it's your back, spine straight, keep your shoulders down. One big breath, please. Sit mindfully with your spine straight and your body relaxed. Think of a word that makes you smile. I'll give you a second. Think of a word that makes you smile. It might be butterfly, or rainbow, or watermelon, or something that makes you smile. Once you have that word, I want you to repeat it to yourself. I want you to say it three times. I want you to whisper it three times. Go. You're whispering your special word that makes you happy. Now I want you to imagine Planting that word like a little seed, and I want you to plant it in your heart. Take that word, pick the word that makes you smile, pretend it's a seed, and plant it in your heart. Now repeat your word and imagine that you're watering the seed that's growing in your heart garden. Okay, you planted the seed, now water it. Good job. We're watering it. Continue saying your word and imagine the seed opening and growing in your heart. So keep saying that word that makes you smile. You've watered it and now it's opening up and it's growing in your heart. What does it become? What did your seed become? It should be the word that makes you smile. Finish this exercise when your happiness seed has finished growing. Because true happiness comes from inside you. And you can plant happiness for yourself. It's what you choose to put in your heart. Okay, so we are going to put treasures in our heart of things that make us smile and things that make us happy. The Lord has blessed us with so much. You think of something, you repeat that word, pretend that it's a seed and put it in your heart. Keep repeating the word in a whisper. I want you to water your little seed in your heart. It's going to start growing. When it opens and it grows, and now you have that wonderfulness inside you. You have that happiness inside of you. And then it can just bubble out to other people. So I want us to take three deep breaths, three mindfulness breaths. Ready? Another one. You guys make me happy. You guys make me smile. And I miss you so much. So I hope you had fun today with our two silly stories and the mindfulness activity of your heart garden. Have an awesome day. Check you later.